Ah, the Game Boy, Nintendo's first handheld system to support interchangeable games. Even though I started playing games a lot later than other people, I still spent quite a bit of time on Nintendo handheld consoles. They were great for riding the bus, they were great for long car rides, you could just pretty much play them anytime. They even had games you couldn't find anywhere else. The problem sometimes is you just want to play it on a little bit bigger screen, and for quite a while there was no option for that. But this all changed in June of 1994 with the release of the Super Game Boy. Retailing for about the same price as a full length game, the Super Game Boy was the first commercially available product that will allow you to play your Game Boy games on the TV. But that's not all it would do, some games were actually programmed to have special features to take advantage of the Super Game Boy's hardware. From specially colored sprites to game specific backgrounds, Super Game Boy enhanced games had a lot of cool features that made them a lot of fun to play on the big screen. While you still don't get full color, you do get some nice palettes to match the game, and also you get some nice coloring of specific sprites in-game. As you can see here, we got some red hearts in Donkey Kong Land 2, and in Pokemon, the HP bar has actually changed color based on how much HP you have left. And in Pokemon Red and Blue, the background will change based on what town you're in. Even if you're playing a non-Super Game Boy Enhanced game, there's still quite a few options for you to play around with. Pressing L and R together would bring up a menu, from that menu, you can change the color palette, change the controls, make your own color palette, draw on the screen, or even change the background. All the original Game Boy games I tested worked just fine, and the reason that they play so well is because the Super Nintendo has some interesting hardware features. The Super Nintendo can actually use external processors. This is also used in Star Fox's Super FX chip. The Super Game Boy actually uses a classic Game Boy processor to actually run the games, while the Super Nintendo itself mainly handles graphics output and controls. Now if you remember from my last video on the Game Boy Color, there are three different types of cartridges that will fit in a Game Boy. First is the gray cartridges, which are classic Game Boy games. The second is dual mode games, which can be used on the Game Boy or the Game Boy Color, having special features for the Game Boy Color. And the third mode is Game Boy Color exclusive games. Since the Super Game Boy only has hardware for the original Game Boy, yes, it will not run Game Boy Color games, but it will also not be able to take advantage of any of the special Game Boy Color dual mode features. Dual mode games look nice and vibrant on a Game Boy Color or Game Boy Advance, would have very limited colors on a Super Game Boy, if any. But just like a normal Game Boy, the Super Game Boy is completely region free, so any region games will work and it even supports borders for out of region games. Years later, the Nintendo 64 was released. Unfortunately, it did not have the same hardware as Super Nintendo did, so there was no way to incorporate extra processors inside the game cartridges. But Nintendo did eventually release an accessory called the Nintendo 64 Transfer Pack. An accessory that will let you plug your games directly into your controller. While this also didn't contain any type of Game Boy processor, it did allow you to connect your games directly to your controller, which opened up a whole new type of console and handheld connection. Not a lot of games ended up using this accessory. Most of the games that do use it are Japanese. One of the lesser known games that uses it is Perfect Dark for the N64. If you were to slide in a copy of Perfect Dark for the Game Boy Color, even without completing it, you could easily unlock some special cheats in the game, one of them being having all the weapons unlocked at the start. And then perhaps the most popular game to make use of this accessory is the Pokemon Stadium series. You can see your Pokemon fight in 3D for the first time, you can use it to trade Pokemon, you can store Pokemon if you want to reset your game. There's a whole lot you can do with it. But it also came with a feature to play your Pokemon games on the TV with a Super Game Boy Color Palette. In order for this to work, the N64 has to stream your game data from your cartridge through your controller pack to the N64. This causes a bit of loading time, but it's still pretty fun to play. And with the release of Pokemon Stadium 2, for the first time we got to play a Game Boy Color game on our TV. Pokemon Stadium 2's GB Tower had support for all the Generation 2 Pokemon games, including Pokemon Crystal version, which was a Game Boy Color exclusive. But with the much larger games also meant more loading times, so with Pokemon Stadium 2 they introduced a new feature, we could have the entire game pre-loaded onto the N64. 
so you can play without the interruption of constant loading screens. However, the disappointing thing about this emulator is just like with the other Pokemon Stadium games, it's locked to only Pokemon games. Also on top of that, just like with the first Pokemon Stadium game, it's also region locked too. You can't even play Pokemon games from other regions. In fact, if you try to do that, you get the exact same error that you'd find when you try to play a game that's not even a Pokemon game at all. It's not the transfer pack through the lockout or even the N64 itself, it's all built into the software. Japanese Pokemon games will only work on Japanese Pokemon Stadium, and US games will only work on US Pokemon Stadium. Finally with the GameCube, Nintendo figured out a way to use the best of both connection methods. For playing games on a TV, they released the Game Boy Player, with full support for Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games. And for communicating between GameCube games and Game Boy Advance games, Nintendo released the GameCube Link Cable. Much like the Super Game Boy, the Game Boy Player pretty much has all the main hardware you find in the Game Boy Advance, including an actual Game Boy Advance processor to ensure you have the best compatibility. The unit attaches to the bottom port on the GameCube and is secured into place with screws. You also need a startup disc to boot the GameCube in Game Boy Player mode. The game slot and link port are oriented exactly like that of the classic Game Boy, so a lot of accessories will work and fit properly. Simply turn on your GameCube with the startup disc in and your game will just go ahead and start booting. No loading screens or menus like you had to deal with on Pokemon Stadium. But you will notice one pretty big change. No Super Game Boy special colors, palettes, or backgrounds. Yeah, this is literally just Game Boy Advance hardware we're running it on right now. But that does mean we get full color from dual mode games. Also, there are game borders, but they're not automatic. We have to switch between them manually. But yeah, aside from that, you get screen sizes, two button configurations, and a filter, and timer, so you can time how long you play your games. Basically, the Game Boy Player doesn't really have a lot of extra features to it. It doesn't even support Super Game Boy Palettes. That made it a little bit disappointing, but it's still really nice. It's the only real way to play all the Game Boy games on your TV at this time. As for the GameCube Link Cable, it's a pretty simple design, but it does pack quite a few features. Mainly it lets GameCube software communicate directly with the Game Boy Advance, even if there's no game inside. For example, if you're using Game Boy Player, and you hook up a Game Boy Advance, and boot up that Game Boy Advance with no game inside, you'll be able to use that Game Boy Advance as a controller for the Game Boy Player. As for other games, there are also Pokemon GameCube titles. Just like with Pokemon Stadium, you can use it for 3D battles and trading and all that good stuff. But one other interesting way it's used is for getting extra content in your Game Boy Advance games. It's not quite like what we have now with DLC, but by using the Mario Kart Double Dash bonus disc, you were able to unlock some exclusive in-game items you'd normally never be able to get. And the last game we're going to talk about is Animal Crossing. Well, yes, the boat little minigame thing and the making your own clothing patterns is pretty cool. I think the better use of the Game Boy Advance Link Cable comes from the NES Advanced Play titles. There are classic NES titles hidden in Animal Crossing, and if you unlock them, you can actually play some of them on your Game Boy Advance. The games are transferred to the Game Boy Advance's RAM. They'll stay on your system until you turn it off. You can unplug your system and play it for as long as you want, and even transfer it to as many Game Boy Advances as you want. Alright guys, that's all I got. I never skipped over some things like the Super Game Boy and Zelda Four Swords and stuff like that, but I just mainly wanted to make a kind of mini documentary on the connection between the Game Boy handhelds and the Nintendo systems. So yeah, nowadays all we really have is like Smash Controller, Monster Hunter 3, save transfers, nothing really big like we used to have. So I just wanted to, you know, have a video to take you back to the good old days when we had bigger connection type stuff. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I guess I'll see you guys later. Bye. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching to the end. If you want to watch my last video in this series, it's on the Game Boy Color. Who knows, you might learn something. Anyway, that's the button on the left. The button on the right will take you to our Nintendo Retrospectives playlist. I even got a video on a DS download station, so remember those? That was quite a long time ago. Anyway, social media is down below, and I guess I'll see you guys later.